has taken steps to protect Lolita, a killer whale, and a big attraction at the Miami Seaquarium. The decision comes after years of protests from animal rights groups. Jonathan Betts is here with more. Yeah, David, the fight to free this killer whale has been going on for decades, but rarely have activists felt as encouraged as they do now. Lolita! It's a sensitive subject that stirs passions and sparked anger. Yeah, these are fair questions. No, he can answer all this. They're very loaded questions. When yeah. we went looking for answers. I, mean, I, can, I cannot imagine I'm the first to ask you these questions, Robert. You're such an aggressive man. Yeah, you're pretty aggressive, your partner. All of it over Miami Seaquarium's biggest star. <laughs> She's been performing here for more than 40 years. A long career that activists say needs to end. Ever since being caught in the waters off Washington State in 1970, Lolita's been dazzling crowds and agonizing animal rights groups. Hundreds marched last month, websites have been launched, and even music videos recorded, urging the 8,000 pound killer whale be free. It is now starting to bear some fruit, so there's real hope for the first time. Federal officials recently added Lolita to a small group of wild orcas on the endangered species list, a victory, activists say, although it doesn't force a move. Certainly anything that could risk or cause an impact to those whales would have to be very carefully considered. Groups hope to move Lolita to a sea pin in the Pacific Northwest and perhaps reunite her with other killer whales. She is in trouble. She needs to be rescued. She's in a tiny tank. Her current home is a 60 by 80 foot pool with a platform in the middle. It's no more than four times the length of her body. The oldest and smallest whale tank in the country, critics say, although the park insists it is legal. I think a lot of people are going to have a hard time understanding how that could be a good environment for Lolita. Why? Because she's been in the same pool, it's a little pool, for 44 years. People live in houses for 44 years. So they're able to leave the house. They can go and see other things. Lolita can't. Hey, Lolita's cared for here. I mean, that's really the bottom line. But when I asked about maybe expanding the pool, he suddenly ended the interview. You're pretty aggressive here, Clark. But so, this is the first time we can end, well, we can end it. You've had a lot more respect in a lot of interviews. Yeah. But I, I, I assure you, I am not trying to be disrespectful, and I am sorry if that's the impression you're getting. It is. I just, are you, are you ending the interview? Is that it? If that's the way it's going to go, partner. He did return. His big concern, moving Lolita, he says, would be disastrous. Plain and simple. If you release her, she's going to die. You're convinced of that? Absolutely. 100%. Releasing a killer whale like Lolita back into the wild has been done before. But activists say it didn't end well. Yeah! Keiko, the star of the hit movie Free Willy. In real life, his freedom wasn't so easy. You are the whale. Before he could be released, Keiko had to learn again how to be a wild whale, like holding his breath and even catching his own food. It cost millions, and after being on his own for a year, Keiko died in 2003. And unfortunately, he didn't have that happy Hollywood ending. I mean, he could still be alive today. Yet Garrett calls it a success story, and says Keiko certainly lived longer in the wild than he would have in a pool. He did fine for five years. He lived very, very well in Iceland, and he loved his native waters. Uh, so that is my experience. Others worry it's simply too late for Lolita. I'm going to blow the whistle on him. Russ Rector wants Seaquarium closed, yet he still questions groups pushing for her freedom. If you've been trying to do something for 20 years and falling on your face for 20 years, it ain't going to happen. But it's a great fundraiser. Activists say donations keep up the pressure to release her. Let her go! So for now, as lawsuits fly... And the fight continues. Lolita will keep performing the only home she's known for nearly half a century. Now that Lily is considered endangered, activists say she has extra protections from harm and harassment, but whether Lolita is actually being harmed or harassed, David, that is something a court will likely have to decide. Jonathan Betts, thank you. Appreciate it. Earlier, we spoke to a marine mammal scientist who is an advocate for having Lolita removed from the Miami Seaquarium and returned to a more natural setting. We asked Dr. Naomi Rose about the facility's claim that moving the whale 
could be deadly. Transporting these animals is always um, uh, difficult. They do uh, do this a lot. They move killer whales around from marine park to marine park quite often. That protocol is in place, and that's what would be used to move Lolita. The difficulty is simply that, of course, they're not used to being out of the water, and that carries a risk for them. But quite frankly, given Lolita's robust health, which is why we're even proposing this, I think she can handle it. So what about the argument that we heard from the Miami Sea Aquarium that, that simply the, the record with whales is that when they've been kept so long, even if you disagree with them being kept in captivity like this, when they've been in there for 44 years, that the, the odds are that it would not survive any sort of pen, any sort of relocation. Pens are not um, a new concept for these animals in captivity. This is something that the Miami Sea Aquarium is trying to uh, tell people that this is just a radical idea. The fact is, is that marine mammals, whales, dolphins around the world are held in sea pens everywhere. They're held in sea pens in, in Florida, dolphins, uh, in captivity, in sea pens. And so this is not a new concept. Lolita's been living in a box. I mean, if you've ever been there, you know that she can barely move around in the tank she's in. I think it's time that she be given the options and choices that she would have if she were in a larger, more natural space. But is it possible that by going to that larger, more natural space, uh, that the stressors, the psychological stressors, might be too great, given that she has been kept in this very small box for so long? Quite frankly, I don't believe so. I think she's intelligent. I think she's robust. I think she's well-adjusted, considering where she is. And to be brutally honest, the, uh, the, I, the, the fact is that there was a whale who lived with her um, for 10 years, and he died in a fairly dreadful way. The fact is, is that she is a very good candidate for retirement. I don't think she's a good candidate for release, given her age. That's not what we're proposing. The argument is, well, that being in a small pen can, that can have stressors, that it can hurt, hurt a whale's health. But you're saying she's in good health, so why not let her simply continue uh, informing people by being part of the show what killer whales are all like? Well, that is not what killer whales are like. She is, you know, not a, an ideal representative because she's all alone. These are family-oriented animals. She, the show at the Miami Sea Aquarium is, is a mockery. It's, it's a circus show. It's not educational at all. I think she can do a lot more good, be a far greater far more uh, important ambassador for her species by being returned to her native waters. The idea that returning her to the waters where she was born, where her family still resides, where her mother is probably still alive, would be so horrible for her is really a disturbing idea. What did the Miami Sea Aquarium do to her that makes her so uh, fragile that she can't be returned to her, her home waters, where she lived for several years before she was caught? All right, Dr. Naomi Rose, she's a marine mammal scientist from the Animal Welfare Institute. Dr. Rose, thanks for being on, on with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for covering this story. Up next, our conversation with Malcolm X's daughter about her dad's legacy 50 years after his assassination. Plus, there's a new cancer warning.